So with that, we'll begin our time together. I ask that you please stand as you are here. We begin in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Holy Spirit. What is baptism? It is water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. What gifts does baptism grant? The grace of God forgiveness of sins. Redeems from death and gives eternal salvation to all who believe. How can water do great things? The water does not do this alone, but the Word of God with and alongside of the water and faith. This is a grace filled water plant, a bath of the Word and the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Thank you. 
we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, from Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. Well, tonight we continue as we continue to look at the foundations of our Lutheran faith. Tonight we consider what Mark Luther wrote in the small catechism on the topic of holy baptism. And so you have it right in front of you. So take a look as I speak. But before we get into the heart of this teaching on baptism, I want to reflect just a little bit about my experience as a pastor baptizing people. You see, baptizing people is one of the great joys of serving a congregation, of being a pastor. Crying babies, parents not sure where to stand, acolytes holding books. It is all wonderful. But I'll tell you, some of the greatest memories I have of doing baptisms are baptizing adults. Now, as Lutherans, we believe that God is an actor, he is the actor in the act of baptism. And so we encourage people to baptize their children, often little baby infants. But we also believe that it is never too late to be baptized. People of any age can receive the gift of grace found in baptism. But I bet your experience is similar to mine. It's pretty rare for adults to get baptized in Lutheran churches. In fact, many people who I find out are not baptized, who have been members of churches, or at least a part of the church, worshiping with the church, get really shy. They don't want to be found out. And they don't want to have to get up in front of everybody for a baptism. Come on. And so, every so often, I start to wonder, what would it look like for us at Bethany, at Faith, to make it normal for adults to get baptized? Now, of course, that would mean that we were connecting with people who had not grown up in the church. And so that's one of the great questions that we continue to face. How do we provide ways to enter into our congregations? How do we give doors and windows for people to come inside our communities? How do we meet and get to know people outside of our immediate family, outside those friends that we've known for years and years? People who might even be a little different than we are. And when you take a look at what Martin Luther wrote about baptism, it applies to adults as well as to babies. You see, baptism at its core is about God's forgiveness. That regular water and God's word, that washes us clean our sin. As it says, Jesus gives the command in Matthew 28 to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And what are the gifts of baptism? It brings forgiveness of sins, redeems death and the devil, gives eternal salvation to all who believe. As the words and 
promise of God to them. So another aside, do we live in a time when people don't see the need for forgiveness? Do we live in a time where people believe that we should all be free to believe whatever we want, just as long as we don't interfere with someone else? Question, put another way, do people still believe in sin? Now, I do believe that people look around and they see that our world is broken. On a global scale, we see this in war, in famine, people starving. We see illness, especially these last two years, that goes across the globe. And then when we get a little bit closer, don't we too see the brokenness of the world where some people become so insanely wealthy that they literally don't know what to do with all their money. And yet there are many others who struggle to feed themselves to find the housing. We see both expensive, beautiful mansions and decaying homes, sometimes not that far away from each other. And in our own personal lives, I think we all have experienced disappointment. We've experienced hurt. We've experienced family disappointment. So I think because of the life we live, this life filled with challenges, I think when we look at we, we do believe that there is sin in this world. And I make the case that we do as well need forgiveness. That there are times in our own lives when we do not live up to our own standards. When we fall short of acting the way we wish we could. And so that's why we need baptism. Why we need to remember that we are washed clean, that we get a new start with God. That in baptism we die to our old way of living and are reborn. I like to think of that image of a person going to a river, being dunked by a baptizer, that old self being drowned. And as they come up, are born and Now sometimes people have asked me, I don't remember my baptism. Can I get baptized again? The answer I give is one baptism is all we need. We believe that baptism is not a one-time event. Instead, instead, we look at what Luther writes. That in baptism, all sins and evil desires are to be drowned and die through daily sorrow for sin and repentance. And on the other hand, that daily a new person is to come forth and rise up to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Now let me tell you, there's days that that's hard to believe, isn't it? into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead, we too might walk in the midst of life. And so we remember Jesus' ministry, how he spent so much of his ministry talking to people who were on the outside, those who were on the edge of society. 
the poor, the unclean, tax collectors, prostitutes. People who lived lives that others viewed as sinful. It is to those people that Jesus spoke and offered a word of forgiveness and acceptance. He had a word of grace to people who felt like they were the black sheep of the world. And I think part of Jesus' message to the world and to us is that all of us, not just some, have fallen short of the glory of God. And that means everyone <laughs> needs to be made right with God. Everyone needs to be baptized. And that leads us to the last question. What happens to people who are not baptized? Are they condemned? Don't we all know many, many people who are good people who are not baptized? And so I remind myself that Jesus gives us a promise. All who believe in me and are baptized will receive eternal life. That is a good and great promise. We seek to trust it and to follow it. For those who do not get baptized, they don't get to hear that promise. And yet, I believe that our God is merciful and gracious. I believe in a God who gives to those who do not deserve. So I simply say it's up to God what will happen to those who are unbaptized. That's not my job. I hope for a gracious action from God. But that's not my place to say. Instead, I do know that you and I are called to invite others into a life of following Jesus. One of those steps to following Jesus is to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn of the day is We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus.
we pray the offering prayer. After we receive the offering, I almost missed you, Bruce. Let us pray. Extravagant God, you have blessed us with the fullness of creation. Now we gather at your feast where you offer us the food that satisfies. Take and use what we offer here. Come among us and feed us with the body and blood of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth. Sorry, Pastor. There's a line, the light shines. I don't oh, want to say that. And yep. play for the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness has not overcome it.